Hello folks, welcome to the Metal Mill 52 shop. Isn't that a nice finish? That's some really tough steel. Uh, you might be able to see here, this is um, an axle hub that I got from my buddy Russ. He used to work at a machine shop that was manufacturing axles for golf carts, I think. So I don't know exactly what kind of steel it is, but it's very tough. And I finally got a good finish, and I wanted to make this video. I really didn't want to, but I thought it would be a good thing to share uh, because getting the right surface finish and making an accurate cut some, sometimes can be challenging. And boy, oh boy, did I just spend a, about a week of my spare hobby time, an hour or so at a time, making some mistakes. But happily, I've learned from them, so taking a positive attitude. Look at this part here. This is a piece made out of the very same steel and it doesn't look too bad. It's the, the video is actually disguising the lousy... There you go. You can see the surface finish. It almost looks like a spool of wound wire. And this is... I tried very hard to get a good finish on this thing and to get an accurate outside diameter and I've basically failed in both of those attempts. Uh, I machined the inside as it was called for. That did not go too badly except for boring the hole. And I'll get into all that in just a second, but very same steel. The biggest thing uh, I did here to, to correct the problems that I was having, I added the rotating tail stock tonight, and I also double checked the carbide that I was using in the cutter. And to my absolute shock, the, I, I, I don't, if you followed my channel, you know I don't use a lot of carbide tools, and this is a really worn one. I need to replace it anyway. But I had just absent mindedly assumed that these gold colored ones were the right ones for steel. And after getting that terrible finish, I had to ask myself, and I looked it up, and I'm like, oh, nope. The right ones for steel are the gray ones that look like cast iron. And the uh, the gold ones are actually made for cast iron and non-ferrous metal. So, oops. Anyway, proper carbide, proper, you know, double check the height. I don't usually machine with this much stick out, but I needed to uh, in order to accommodate the live center there, which kept the, the part from rotating. So, um, this is a beautiful fit now. It, this, it, it needed a fit just perfectly to go inside this bearing and I'll show you what the whole assembly is that that I'm trying to make here. Let me show you the prints. This is from page uh, 95 of the book on the universal pillar tool and I'm making these two shafts. This one goes inside this one as you can see it's 5 eighths of an inch and the uh, inside diameter here and they both have 0.501 inner sections where a bearing similar to the bronze bearing I just showed you goes in. Well, this this part here that I'm holding is this one here and like I said it generally resembles the part I was trying to make in an outer diameter but it was not a good fit and is ultimately going to go to the scrap bin or or you know basically the farm use type thing. I'm very thrilled with the new ones that I've made. Let me show you, come over here a little bit more. These are the axle pieces that I was talking about. Like I said, I don't know what kind of steel it is, but my buddy Russ was kind enough to give me a bunch of them. These are drops and seconds from the CNC machines that they had at his machine shop where he worked. And here, this is the uh, the part that receives the uh, the other other part and a terrible way of explaining things but the one I just showed you goes in here and you know the surface finish on this looks pretty decent it actually is a pretty good fit for this hole on the universal pillar tool you know it's okay but it was sloppy and when I went to bore it out on the inside there then the five eight inch bore it was terrible and just just made a terrible fit. So I'm, I had made a another slug basically. I have to do the inside machining for this one, so I'll replace that with this. And um, there are some of the the bearings and bushings that I was talking about. That will this is all going into the drill head. So 
Anyway, the lesson learned, um, fixing mistakes. Let me show you the inserts. These, you can see the Interstate brand. I believe I got these from Enco back about a million years ago when Enco was still uh, the go-to for us home shop machinists. And, you know, like I said, I, I, I thought the, the gold colored and without doing a lot of carbide, I, I was like, oh, that's like the titanium nitride type drill bit, so that'll be good for seal. Absolutely wrong. These are um, the TCN55 turning inserts, and you professional machinists are probably laughing at me right now, but these are for non-ferrous metals and cast iron, which explains why I have them, because I do a fair amount of work in cast iron, and I probably bought these when I was doing a lot of the machining on the cylinders for the live steam locomotive. These gray ones, which I got probably from Shars, because these are Mitsubishi, beautiful inserts. These things are uh, made for the, the uh, excuse me, alloy steel, which is, of course, what I'm turning now. So really pleased that I took a moment. I'm sad that I wasted that time to, to figure it all out, but I thought it'd be uh, worthwhile sharing with you the... Um, the lesson learned there and I'm really pleased with that finish and how this bearing fits it's absolutely perfect sliding pardon me this is the one-handed operation here it's a perfect sliding fit for this bearing on here there's absolutely no shake here you don't no force is needed I just I turned it to the right diameter it was maybe a half half a thou um, large and I use some sandpaper to get the exact right finish. So really pleased with how that came out. Now now that I'm done and I've shot the video, I'm going to part this off and I'll be able to machine. I'll probably I'll take the three jaw chuck off of the lathe and I'll, I'll be using the 5C collet chuck for the remaining finishing operations. So anyway, hope that helps and um, just uh, enjoy your shop time, and I will keep you posted.